Hi guys, welcome to the vlog. Uh, Zarina here uh, with the Woolly Nomad vlog slash podcast episode number five, I think. <laughs> uh, last time I spoke to you um, was way back in June when I went to the art fair and I vlogged from there. Uh, unfortunately, I was very busy, so I couldn't do a lot of vlogging it. So there was limited uh, content in terms of knitting in that vlog. <laughs> so hopefully this uh, vlog is going to be a bit knit heavy. Um, I'm hoping to share some projects that I've been working on and hopefully something that I finished. Uh, we'll continue with the Armscope Manor mittens. Um, and apologies for not uh, continuing that quicker or sooner because I think in the last episode I said see you next week <laughs> uh, somewhere in the universe it is next week well that's my excuse <laughs> anyway um, so let's get on with the knitting goodness as they say my fur this week are these lovely adventitious Christmas socks which I knit up a year or so ago and I used various stitches with this pattern and I've now made it available on my blog so you can head over there to woollynomad.blogspot sorry <laughs> uh, the link is in the description there's lots of different stitches you can use and they're a great pair of socks to knit up so there's something for you for Christmas the cotton socks were coming along so yeah just needed a bit of untangling of the ball The summer cotton socks are residing in this elephant tote bag I made a while back. Uh, they're coming along and they're viscose and cotton mixed. Knitting and strolling with bubbles of course and I'm currently knitting the summer cotton socks and they are a blend of cotton and viscose kind of a four ply or fingering and it's a really soft drapey fabric uh, very comfy so I'm looking forward to wearing them. I'm using a 2.75 millimeter needle and I'm currently um, just past the heel and I'm now doing the leg area of the sock. And here it is in all its glory on the grass. Uh, I tried them on and they're a bit loose but I made them loose on purpose because I expect them to shrink and I don't want tight cotton socks. <laughs> I wanted to share this great project bag with you that I bought from Dunham Mill uh, not too long ago and it was in a sale. <laughs> so uh, it's got one of those little knitting holes which uh, makes it easy to cart around knitting and knit while you're on the hoof, if you've got a lot of knitting that is. But I actually use it to keep my accessories in and my needles. So as you can see, I have uh, some pencil cases, some other little bags and etc. <laughs> uh, I've got a little uh, sock project I want to share later. And in these pencil cases, which were gifted to me by somebody special, um, <laughs> I keep my needles and I've got them size wise. So each pencil case has got um, a sizing so these are the twos in this one so you're gonna get a 2, a 2.25, a 2.50 etc etc in this one I think I have the larger sizes uh, oh, oh are they <laughs> uh, and in one of them I've got the three millimeter one so you've got the three the 3.25 
I find the ones that you use mostly are the twos and the threes, uh, maybe the fours for DK weight yarn. Uh, obviously twos are for knitting socks and things like that. Uh, here I've got some spare needles that I don't want to get lost, so I just pop them in a pocket. Um, what else have I got in this bag? Oh, and I've got my uh, little accessories bag, so I've got a, little, a couple of bits in there. Yep. And oh, and this is a vintage um, case, if you like. Yeah. Uh, that I got. Oh, it must be like thirty years old or something. But it's really handy to keep your knitting tools like your measuring gauge and your rulers and oh, one minute let me get the measuring gauge out and show you yep if i can do it with one hand yep there it is very handy and you've got your little scissors in there you've got a tool to pick up stitches and these i use for um you know popping stitches on if I, you know, on a hold position, whatever, and I've got some extra wires. So yeah, so that's my uh, little case that I have in there. Oh, and I've got some extra little bags in here. My Millie's cookie bag, which is also kind of vintage and possibly about 10 years old. And uh, in there, I'm going to be uh, keeping my new sock project with this great zigzag yarn from King Cole 75% superwash and 25% nylon so hard wearing sock yarn and so that was one that I bought recently and this one was in my stash and I think this is King Cole too it could be West Yorkshire spinners but I think it's King Cole uh, yeah so I'll be starting a helical knit with these two yarns which hopefully ne next episode <laughs> As it was a heat wave recently, I made my way down to my local woods for a walk, taking my project with me, and it was my cinema project, which I haven't shared for a while, and it was a bit tangled up. So I set about untangling the project first, uh, which was a bit of a hassle, but you know this yarn, it's the DK um, Cotton Merino yarn. I think it's 50% cotton, 50% merino. Uh, a lovely yarn to knit with. Uh, once organised, uh, I laid it out to have a look at. There are some anomalies, uh, so they're not perfectly knit or anything, but not to worry. And it's a plain, uh, well, it was a provisional cast on, a plain foot, plain uh, toe and heel, and then a helical uh, knit with the two colours. So I'm sort of picked it up again now and I'm hoping to finish that in the not too distant future. <laughs> I'm here in the park and about to do some knitting. So let's get on with it. So my project is residing in this really cute Peter Rabbit project bag that Moi has popped together. Uh, there it is. So it's actually a crochet project, not a knitting project. And it's a crochet along that I'm doing with a YouTuber called MJ's Off The Hook Designs. And she is it called MJ's Off The Hook Designs? I think it is. Anyway, I'm going to put a link below so you can find it if you want to. But the project is called the Easy Crochet, All-in-One Crochet Top, I think it's called. And uh, yeah, so uh, as the name suggests, it's going to be an all-in-one crochet project, which sounds um, fun and easy. And I don't like the idea of weaving in ends anyway. I'm using a DK silk and cotton mix 
from who are the people i can't remember but i'll put a link somewhere <laughs> anyway i'm having fun and it's very easy tropical cupcakes and knitting yum yum Apparently, Birmingham is famous for its canals and uh, I don't know if you know which bit this is but uh, I am in Birmingham and there is a retail park behind me and I brought my project in my fun little project bag and here this area has got a nice sort of seating bit <laughs> that you can eat lunch on and also do some knitting so my lovely project is residing in this little project bag that i made uh, me made project bag again and i'm using the elements yarn which i bought a while back from hobbycraft and i talked about it in a previous episode so it's dk weight yarn and it's in the fresh water colorway and it's very soft uh, i am using the lace weight addy four millimeter needles and these are the recommended needles for this yarn as says on the label but it's up to you of course depending on your gauge and this is a really soft drapey kind of fabric uh, which would be lovely for a scarf or a jumper really nice for next to skin i really recommend it um, i did do a swatch and washed it and it didn't seem to make much difference so hopefully it's going to hold up um, i cast on uh, did a rib and then just doing some plain knitting and this is going to be when it grows up it's going to be a beanie hat yeah. Uh, for any of you who've watched my previous episodes, <laughs> you will remember this haul from Hobbycraft. Can't go wrong with one pound a ball. <laughs> so uh, get your fluff on is what we're going to be doing. And uh, I, I, I don't know, it, it's a, a very nice, soft, fluffy yarn. And I thought I'd give it a go, take a risk, etc. Yeah, there we go. And I have actually put together a design for your benefit. I've, uh, you know, popped it on some paper. <laughs> so this is gonna be knit flat or in the round and each row, each section, sorry, will be two or four rows. And you can either knit it in the round or you can seam it. So totally up to you really. There's um, two arguments well for and against if you like uh, i've also got sort of what i might do cast on knit but i've left some blanks so that i can fill it in when i know what i'm doing uh, so i'm hoping to do a swatch first and um yeah so if i knit it in the round i might get a jog but you know with the join with the color join uh, and obviously if you knit it in the flat you don't so yes Continuing with our mitten knit along, and it's the Armscote Manor mittens. I'm using the Armscote Manor yarn, so we've got a cream colour and a grey. This is how far we've got so far. We've done some rib, we've done some pattern, and now we're ready for the next bit. So if we look at our mitten, we have got the thumb gusset to do now and the thumb. So we're gonna do the thumb gusset area and that middle part of the mitten. So that's the bit that we'll be doing today. 
So we've been following the pattern chart, which is available on the blog, and the link is down below in the description. So uh, we've just knit a plain row, and now the next row is a pattern row. We're going to be using a couple of stitch markers, uh, one to denote the beginning of the thumb gusset, and one to denote the end. So the first stitch is a knit stitch in the grey. And I like to organize my yarn, so I usually have the cream on my finger, left hand finger, and the working yarn is the grey. We're going to make one stitch, so you pick up your stitch, um, and you're going to knit into the back of it. So the stitch leg is at the front, but you will knit into the back. And that's a make one, and it makes a kind of a little stitch that looks a bit like a knot, but it's quite invisible when you um, finally look at it. And then the next stitch is a cream colored one. Uh, then we're gonna make another one, but on the other side. So this time the leg is on the back and we're gonna knit through the front like so. So you might have to rewind that and go in slow motion. <laughs> and then you knit one. And those five stitches are the beginning. So primarily the first stitch is always a knit, the second stitch a make, and then the middle stitches are just stitches. So yeah, so the middle stitches, which will expand, are just middle stitches. Right, so we're going to put another marker to denote the end of the gusset stitches, if you like, thumb gusset stitches. And then we're just going to continue knitting in pattern as per the pattern, which, like I said before, is on the blog. I have got some written instructions down below, but they're not all encompassing as to which bit is grey and which bit is white. <laughs> yeah, so once you've finished that row, then you just um, slip your marker. And the next row, as you can see, will be a plain row. And we're not going to increase at all on this row. We are going to just knit. So, yeah. So the next row is an increase row and also a pattern row. So we slip our marker. And then the first stitch is always a knit stitch. And it's always the um, background colour stitch. Well, generally always. <laughs> uh, in this instance, anyway. Uh, the second stitch is a make stitch. And again, the leg is at the front and you knit into the back. So the middle stitches are just knit, uh, going with the uh, thumb gusset pattern. And uh, that's a knit stitch. And then we're doing another make one. And the leg of this make one is at the back and you knit through the front. And then the last stitch is a knit stitch. Um, and there you have your second round, if you like. And then you just continue in pattern with the rest of the knitting. So I've knit a little bit on the thumb gusset. And as you can see, the pattern is vertical rather than kind of zigzag as the main body is. And um, the first stitch is always a knit stitch. The second, a make stitch. And then the middle stitches are just knit as in pattern. Uh, the stitch from last is a make and the last stitch is a knit. So you only make a stitch when you are doing a pattern row and the plain rows are always just knit. Um, so I'm just going to go over again the knitting technique for the thumb gusset. So we slipped our marker and the first stitch is a knit. Second stitch is a make and the arm is or the leg is at the front and we're knitting into the back of the stitch. 
like so. And then all the middle stitches up until the last but one stitch. Well, actually, up until the last stitch because the um, last but one stitch is going to be knit with the bar. That's going to be the, the make stitch. So you carry on, knit all the way to the last stitch, and then this is the make stitch, which is the last but one stitch. And you knit from the front, and the bar is at the back, or the leg. And then that's your uh, row done, and then you just continue knitting in pattern. The thumb gusset is done and we've knit an extra 17 stitches. It's looking lovely and neat and you can see where the thumb gusset is coming out of the main knitting if you like. So let's just go ahead and try it on and see what it looks like. <laughs> yes, um, as well as the 17 we've just made, we're going to make another three stitches and they will help to eliminate any holes that we might get at the palm thumb join if you like first of all though we're going to put the thumb gusset um, stitches onto a holding needle i like to use a nine inch circular there are other things you can use like you could use a bit of yarn uh, with a darning needle or you could use a specific tool that holds needles, uh, sorry, holds stitches. Um, but I like to use the uh, circular needle. To be honest, I sometimes use just general needles. As long as they've got some wire in them, it's handy. Here we go. <laughs> Uh, this is the tool, uh, hang on, yeah, here it is. So you can actually put the stitches on that for holding purposes. But uh, what I do is I just, um, yeah, take off the thingy. And we're going to be making the stitches just here. Where, you know, thumb meets palm. So what we do is we organize our knitting so that we can wrap some stitches around the needle. So you just wrap like so. And we're gonna, at this point, just wrap two stitches. And then we're just gonna continue knitting. Uh, yeah, so there we go. <laughs> and when we get to the, um, when we finish this round, if you like, uh, then we will be knitting those couple of stitches that we've just made. Right, so we've knit in the round and these are the stitches that we've made and we're going to be knitting those. And they might be a, a bit hard to knit because they might be tight. So, you know, just uh, bear with it as it were. <laughs> Actually, these weren't too bad. Actually, these were all right. Um, and, and yeah, and then continue knitting. And if it's the pattern, then continue knitting in pattern. I've noticed an anomaly with the knitting. We have this extra large float behind where the thumb and the palm meet. Usually I like to make an extra stitch here, the third stitch, which I was talking about earlier. Uh, but what I'll do is I will 
incorporate that float into the stitch and that will get rid of the bagginess of the float if you like and I do like to do that third stitch afterwards because of that very reason to take out any looseness or extra gaps etc that you might get here it's not a general way of doing it I don't think it's something I do sometimes and I don't do it all the time either but I think in this case it's going to work nicely and uh, otherwise the floats look fine so that, I think that was just the one really and what's going to happen is that the thumb is going to join to the palm from there as well but like I said the thumb is going to be done last yeah, and that will all pull together once we um, get the stitches active once more so we are going to knit a few rows for the palm area then we're going to add some waist yarn to one side we're going to do the thumb later because well it's on holding needles <laughs> So here we go and we've um, knit up a few rows for the palm area and now we're going to add a row here of waste yarn. We will slip the stitches on the other side and then we will add one row of plain knitting. So here I have already done that so I've added one row of waste yarn, um, not row sorry half a row so it's on one side only. The other side I have slipped the stitches and then I have knit around in the plain knitting. And that's all we're doing today really. The thumb's going to be next time and also the top of the mitties. So happy knitting and have fun. <laughs>